What's going on? <clears throat> what's going on, man? What's up? And welcome back to another video. In this video, we got the most generational rivalries in the animal kingdom by Casual Geographics. You know, we, we watch a lot of videos on this channel. You know, we watch we watch a lot of Casual Geographic videos on this channel. I don't think I got to explain who this is or what he does. We all know by now what he does. But um, the link for this video is going to be down in the description. So if you want to watch that for yourselves, so make sure y'all go ahead and check that out. And let's go ahead and get into this one. Hey. Damn. Uh, oh, oh, always forget to what turn this bit down. You I ain't never been scared. You soft, good boy. You know how much generational hatred it takes to rather have an op alive and crippled than just dead and out the way? It's easy for us to forget, but for most animals, nature's a jihad from the jump, a gauntlet of grotesquerie, where if you die of old age, you're a spoiled minority. And with millions trying to survive at the same time, that can only lead to one thing, beef. And whether due to competition, an underdog finally biting back, or just an animal choosing problems over peace, you're gonna see that some animals have a genuine grudge sequence into their DNA. But two things real quick. One, this is technically Crazy. a remake of an older video, but as a rule of thumb, anything with iPhone 8 quality or Apple headphones for a mic should be disregarded. And two, while the facts and fades might be true, you're gonna hear me anthropomorphize animals a lot in this video and treat them like humans. But at the end of the day, animals are just playing the cards they were dealt and doing what comes naturally to survive. That being said, hating each other with prejudice-laced passion is what comes naturally to these two. Lions and hyenas might have a beef more infamous and It's kind of like cat and dogs a little bit. It's one that involves spawn killing. Oh, you know, yeah, front foot. Calorie jacking, on both sides, mind you, and the aforementioned handicapping. Lions and hyenas have generational beef that's been marinating for as long as they've been alive, and it's all thanks to the power of between <laughs> an overgrown He's African and a maligned mongoose on steroids. In some places, lions sit at the top, and in others, the Serengeti laugh tracks the dominant predator. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I don't have a bias, but there are no good guys or bad guys. Both are apex predators that start off life as pint-sized cubs just trying to survive the brutal RNG of life. Something I truly wish oh. on none of you. Lord of the Beast ain't a game you want to play, but maybe Beast Lord is. Beast Lord. Oh man, let me go back to this. All right, so obviously adult is grit, but maybe baby hyena, baby baby lion, who you got winning in a fight? You know, now that I think about it, it's probably not right to um put babies against each other. So I'm just gonna retract that statement and act like I didn't say anything. Truly wish on none of you. Lord of the Beast ain't a game you want to play, but maybe Beast Lord is. Beast Lord The New Land is an animal themed strategy mobile game with not only vivid level designs Damn, and that nigga looking at me? but more than 500 animals you can add to your party. Just staring at my soul. Support. So because of a sudden change in climate and your previous home now being unlivable, you, the beast, basically the host to be a couple That's a nice little ad, ad he, he got there. But, no, seven, 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 but I'm not here for an ad. And there's about a I'm here to see beef. Ends before the first chapter, and the last happy vice trap has a lot to do with it. And obviously, vice very much versa. But what if I told you this feloform family feud ain't even the worst beef lines have to deal with? You lose tough points when it takes ten of you to press one of them. Nah, but the real road block to this panther's pursuit of happiness? The animal's so vindictive, folks think water they buffalo Black Death and Widowmaker. Cave buffalo stand on business, and they'll trap lions in trees for hours, and they'll even hit an Uno reverse and hunt the hunter. And with herds that can reach quadruple digits. Bro, I was saying this the um the other day about rhino horns and stuff, but like I, obviously there's some type of sharp and whatnot. But when when these things use their their horns, do they ever like? They're probably more used for defense, like oh don't get poked by this bit. But do they be actively trying to like really put that motherfucker in? Things because I've never really seen just me personally. I've never seen like a rhino, a water buffalo, anything with like horns or you, stuff like that. I've never seen them like in, I've never seen it in something. You feel me? Uh, no diddy. It's still more than weaponized the power of friendship. Say what you will. I've never seen a hyena make a lion look like that. Not to mention they'll play keep away with oh. a lion cub. And it's all thanks to mobbing. And mobbing's exactly what you see here. And it's we the mob game. gang. A rogue that boy, them boys said, I'm with the gang, I'm with the mob, what was you thinking? A highly intelligent, highly social tank of a primate. Divided baboons are leopard lunch meat. United and the leopard gets folded like an omelet. You know it's an iconic beef when the kids are involved, and both leopards and baboons will kidnap the young of each other. With leopards, some say it's Man. a chess play, debate the baby's bigger, ruthless parents. While baboons have enough foresight to cancel a cup before it can grow up into a problem. 
That's not the only theft they commit. Baboons are underrated predators that'll turn a gazelle baby shower into a homicide in a Happy Meal. Which means baboons aren't above pocket picking other predators. Which makes it wild hypocritical that the same malice monkeys will ruin leopard hunts with an alarm call to warn their prey. It takes a special level That's of crazy. red block a predator on the hunt. It's like how we used to think humpback whales were the guardians of the sea for saving other animals from killer whales. Whole time it's an ancestrally traumatized cetacean going out of its way to interfere with orca hunts to make sure the zebras go home hungry. You see, the whale killers will often murk baby whales, and the humpback hood does not let that slide. And it's not just on sight, mm. any sense is an invitation. One time a pair of spike-powered humpbacks sabotaged a group of orcas after a grey whale calf and proceeded to harass them for six hours straight. Seals, sunfish, and apparently even penguins have benefited from the beef. As the humpback motto states, no orca alive shall prosper. And that's on pod. It might seem like the leopard gets grief religiously in this beef. Just know when the Did they tell out, you that? Yeah, where, where did he find that fact, out? How does he know that? And being the best tree climbing cat that makes it a bane to baboon. So I'd say it's pretty even. And if you're wondering what happened to him, he's fine. And the very next day, he was seen trying a tree or porcupine. So clearly his risk calculator's broken. But at least baboons have numbers on their side against an athletically disrespectful tree line. Imagine having problems with- Bro, you know what I think about animals, right? Like this monkey that's getting grit by- by this leopard or whatever they if he gets away right and let's say this nigga just get like a big chunk of his ass bit out that nigga gotta go home with a big ass old hole in his butt and he gotta stay like that until that shit heals like the nigga don't get no medicine no band-aid no antibiotics no perks no gas just, just gotta go there and thug it life sucks for animals bro i'd be shitty the biggest cat on the planet and having to run that fate solo. The tiger's the death stroke of the cat world. Strong man, man. Census subtraction that'll take down gars, crocodiles, Damn. and tigers are on record eradicating elephants. They even dare go after bears, including the most homicidal one on the planet. The sloth bear's gotta be the most trigger happy of the bears, and it's all thanks to this thing I just made up called the predator prey paradox. Hmm. Basically, it means you're infinitely more fornicated in the fortune apartment if a moose presses you than if a bear, because with predators, you gotta convince them you're worth the effort, but an animal that already gets hunted will turn you into a was before they take time to judge your intent. Real life Baloo often gets bodied by tigers and leopards. Also, most of their diet is insects, and the same claws that help them break into termite apartments means they can't just climb from the smoke like some Damn. Of the which means what you got here is a high-strung insect eater with predator hardware. It's like a giant honey badger, and they're so unpredictable that folks actually fear them more than they do tigers. Not for no reason, because despite having a bigger population and a wider range, brown bears actually murk half the people this floppy-faced anxiety attack does. But you see the thing with tigers, bears can make up to 5% of their diet, and they usually target cubs or moms with cubs. The tiger trauma runs so deep that since tigers have been known to imitate sandbar deer while hunting them, sloth bears got Crazy. panicking at the sound of real deer. So what you got here is a beef between a predator and prey that opts for fight over flight. Sloth bears will square up to a tiger head on, and the sheer balls of facing them can intimidate inexperienced tigers that don't know and they get hefty. The ones that do prefer to catch them slipping at the termite mound, ambushing the sloth bear and going for its neck. Because once a slothy has to grapple with a giant house cat, it's up for him. But even then, the equalizer of Asia better come correct, and sloth bears instinctively go for the face, and even in a losing effort, the bear can cripple the tiger. Especially when it's a mother ready to die about her baby. And I was not kidding, put the aggressive Volca in the higher weight class and lions would have the same problems. And like any great beef, both sides have a healthy level of respect and fear, where sloth bears usually avoid tigers, and tigers are generally wary of bears. Meanwhile, the next beef has one animal literally praying they don't run into each other. 2020 had a lot of headlines, so many that you probably forgot the murder hornet subplot. Yeah, I remember them as I ain't forget. Hornets, and they are pretty much black air force energy in the form of a bug. Their sting is sharp enough to poke through gear beekeepers normally wear. Damn. Their finishing move literally involves decapitating their prey with their mandibles. In Japan, Damn. these homicide hornets knock off 30 to 50 people a year, and it's not just people Damn. who wear shirts. They also severely bully bees, and unlike bees, they can sting multiple times, can deliver 10 times the venom, are five times bigger, and are built like a tiny armored fighter jet. That's how murder hornets can obliterate yeah, imagine seeing one of these niggas, bro. When Asian hornets started popping up in the US, people were understandably shook. And it was believed only one bug could stand up to the aerial assaults. The praying mantis is straight up oppressive. An ambush hunter that has lizards, frogs, fish, and even small birds on its body count. They have praying mantis is so it's such a cool bug, bro. Flight, they've been made their choice. And in 2020, a video like a would go viral samurai. of a mantis murking a hornet, going for brain like a sapio. In the wild, it's a different story, and it's often hornets that get caught packing up praying mantises. They're arguably the only insect that can give 10% of the Furious Five problems. But as you can see, a mantis won't miss a chance to settle the score, but who has the upper hand in his rivalry? Unfortunately, it might not be who you want. 
According to scientists, it's usually the mantis taking the L, so much that mantises are actually a well-documented source of food for the hornets. And while the black mm. and the roaches get their licks in when they can, pretty much everything has to go right for them to come out on top. But also, you peep out a terminator termite ripped off its legs before eating it alive, don't try and tell me this ain't personal. The sad truth is, this hornet was actually anesthetized before it got manhandled. They literally had to nerf the hornet to gift wrap a W for the mantis. The mantis might not be the answer against a Bundy bug, but damn it if they, they don't just give start eating his head. Hell, so do bees. While well, he was alive, that's crazy. Hornet and vibrate so hard they imagine getting your head ate while you're still alive and while both bees and mantises get their moments this is the first beef to have human intervention but it's not like the next beef which was 100 percent caused by humans the heaviest snake on the planet is the green anaconda and the second heaviest is currently slithering all over florida the burmese python can measure nearly 20 feet long weigh up to and over 200 pounds yeah and we got everything down here bro deer to birds to bobcats Normally, you'd have to go to Southeast Asia to see them, but thanks to Florida's fetish for f***ery, along with illegal pet releases, the same predator that puts the noose in nuisance is now a legitimate part of the population. They were first yeah, seen bro. in the Everglades in 1979. Today, they're thousand strong. There's even a theory that in 1992, Florida folded to Hurricane Andrew, which leveled a python breeding facility and allowed them all to escape. Today, it's believed that for every one python that gets sighted, there's hundreds, if not up to a thousand, that don't. And with 30,000 sightings from 2008 to 2010, safe to say Florida's officially finding out. The problem is, back in Burma, they have tigers and leopards to keep them in check, but here, there's only one animal that can hope to stop them. Alligators are a prehistoric assault weapon, and on the rare, they've been known- Shout out to all the alligators in Florida, bro. And as predators without prejudice, they're putting on smaller snakes like the python. The problem is, once pythons get big enough, they'll eventually spin the block and cook gators. So now what you got is a sledgehammer with teeth and a leather straitjacket in an arms race constantly trying to eat each other, and I'm still not doing the beef justice. When the Bane of Burma swallows an alligator, its body goes into overdrive. Its heart rate increases, organs like its heart, kidneys, and liver all get bigger, and its metabolism hits another gear. Not only can a python digest a whole alligator in only a week, if Dr. Steven Sikor of the University of Alabama is right, it actually takes less energy for them to down a gator than other options like rats or pigeons. Right. I bet you think that's metal. Wait till you hear what he pulls. Cause python Pythons will actually read their victim's heart rate while squeezing them to death, so they know when to stop. Problem is, alligators can slow their heart rate all the way down to 2-3 to three beats a minute. This means the snake can end up calling it too soon and prematurely start swallowing the gator alive. Only for it to struggle hard enough to bust through the snake like a messed up Crazy. Box. Well, they both died, but nothing says beef more than if I'm going down, best believe death taking this two for one. That's how ugly competition can get. And this is the other side. Foxes and owls have no love loss, and it's for the classic reason of them pretty much having the same grocery list. Also, foxes will swipe owl chicks, and some owls, like the eagle owl, will murk them right back. But it's the snowy owl and the arctic fox that run into each other the most, especially with the white air force building nests on the ground and foxes being willing to steal from anyone. Big ass polar time, bears. Though, a lot of this, a lot of posturing, and a whole lot of hold me back. Whether it's an owl fox feud or a reptile dysfunction, most animal rivalries just start with them trying to put food on their plate. But what about a beef between animals working together? Octopus will straight up deck fish in the face, and according to science, it's a case of workplace assault. Octopus and fish like groupers often team up to hunt, since the octopus can chase prey through the Yeah, groupers be stupid. <laughs> in open water, they get got by the grouper. You see two problems. One, in a partnership, someone's bound to get shorted. And two, octopus are smart enough to hold grudges and just do stuff out of spite. An octopus named Truman decided he wasn't rocking with one of the researchers, so every time he'd see her, he'd give her the old siphon saltwater shower. Eventually, she would go off to college and then come back months later to visit, and at that point, Truman hadn't been on disrespectful timing in a minute. Yeah, that streak ended the moment he saw her, as he super soaked her on sight. So octopus that feel like they're getting cheated in a partnership are much more likely to get punchy. Sometimes they'll lash out just to keep the fish in line. And sometimes if an octopus got backdoored in the past, they'll just project it all over a new fish that didn't even do anything. And since yeah, octopus can hunt several niggas, fish at a time, they'll even get petty and ban the offender from the entire hunting party for the aquatic crime of embezzlement. That's why one of the worst things to beef with is intelligence. Just ask coyotes, since ravens and coyotes often end up scavenging for the same scraps, especially when they belong to wolves. But of course, the generational instigator, the raven, will straight up snitch on coyotes trying to pinch off the wolf pack. And while Wiley's running for his life, what does the raven do but fly directly over him like a helicopter during a police chase? Imagine getting violated by a wolf pack, all because a goth Tweety put a hit out. Last thing you want to do is make enemies with an animal smart enough to do something about it. Something a city in South Africa is learning the hard way. Because Cape Town's currently being overrun by baboons. And like most things, 
it's our fault. Because no matter what you tell them, there's always going to be tourists feeding panhandling primates. The only issue is baboon society runs on bullying, where dominant monkeys will basically steal the lunch money of lower ranks. So not only do baboons not fear humans, but because people kept feeding them, a lot of them see all humans as low ranks. And bro, I'll kick that nigga in his shit, bro. His whole, whole chest gonna cave in. Have been known to break into houses to raid fridges. They'll mug small children, and you can even get carjacked by a whole troop. Thanks to the Cape Nature Conservation Laws Amendment Act, it's illegal to feed, trap, poison, or kill the monkeys. Meaning, these habitual. Oh yeah, and then it's it's, it's definitely good fade. Then. Went to court over yeah, I mean, fucked up. After he said eight of them broke into his kitchen and started attacking him and his wife. But with thug monkeys also stealing crops, some people said Fuck it and started fighting back. And not only do the monkeys end up getting hurt or murked, it only makes the baboons lash out even harder. That's not the dental of an animal you want problems with. But at the end of the day, the Damn, these are, are not the fist of animal he won't beef with either. Timing if we didn't go and build a city on their front lawn. Plus, a baboon can go through your trash can and find more nutrition in 30 seconds than it would in six hours of foraging. So we can't be mad at them for working smarter. All we can do is what every other animal in this video already does and just find a way to deal with it. Even if it means a baboon takes your hood pass. But that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you take water, shit for me. Your mother. Tell Don't you that. Stop trying these monkeys, man. I promise you won't like how that story ends. And I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Me too, bro. And I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. If y'all did, leave a little like, comment, subscribe, share, all of that good stuff. Turn the post notification bells on too. And peace, love, and positivity. And I will catch y'all in the next one, man. It's two options in this world. Is you gonna win or lose? Is you gonna take the risk or not? You know you gotta choose. Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos.